Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at working with text in Python. Being able to work with character strings is something we're going to come back to a lot, uh, especially as we begin to work with the VEX V5 display and the smart controller. Before getting too far ahead of myself, I'm going to take a look at a little bit of the theory behind strings in Python and then we'll look at some real life examples. Strings are sequences of characters which are contained using either single or double quotes. Here we see a few different examples that are all valid strings. We have robot mesh in double quotes, robot mesh in single quotes, and even a complete phrase containing multiple words and quotation styles. Now remember, you have to open and close a string using the same style of quotation marks. This means that if you opened with a double quote, you will need to close the string using a double quote and vice versa if you used single quotes. The key thing to remember with strings is that they are ordered sequences of characters. This means that each character in the string, including the empty white spaces between words, has a unique address that the character in the string can be referenced by. Indexing makes use of opening and closing square brackets. So when we want to grab a character from a string, we simply place the index number within the square brackets. As an example, here we see the string hello. And as you can see, each character in the string has a unique address. The very first character in a string always lives at index zero. And the last character lives at an address that is one number less than the length of the string. These characters can also be referenced by what's called a reverse index. That is an index that goes from backward to forward. Because of indexing, it's possible to lift portions of the string. This is known as string slicing. String slicing takes the form of a starting index, that is the index of the first character in the slice, a stop index, where you will go to up to but not include, and finally a step, which is the size of the jump that you will take. Let's go and explore some of these concepts. I'm here in Robot Mesh Studio and I'm going to create a new project. The target platform is going to be a VEX V5 mimic, but know that everything I'm about to show you will also work as an IQ mimic. So if you are using the VEX IQ mimic and you're choosing a programming language, be sure to pick the uh, beta or the Python beta option here at the bottom. I suspect at some later unknown date in the future, these betas will become the new standard working uh, versions of the languages for the IQ robot. And these current uh, choices up here at the top will probably say something like old next to them. For now, I'm going to go back to uh, Vex v5 Mimic. Language is going to be Python. And I'll just accept the default name and I'll hit create. Okay, so uh, strings can take uh, one of two forms. They can manifest themselves as uh, just a string literal. This is a fixed value that usually appears within our print statements. So I might go something like print, and then in opening and closing parentheses, I could type here, Python is awesome. And this is what's known as a string literal. Conversely, we could also have a string stored as a variable. So I could create a variable name here called uh, my robot, and I could name it Wally. And this time I'm using single quotes. This is known as a string variable because the values within my robot can change. Now, if I add a print statement here and go print my robot and run this program, it should print the string literal, which is the text here in the parentheses, and then it should print my robot. So let's see if that's the case. Let's go up here and run. And we can see that down here in the console window, we have Python is awesome and Wally as our robot name. So earlier in the video, we talked about the importance of encapsulating our string using matching quotation styles. Uh, that means that if I open a string with a double quote, I should close it with a double quote and vice versa for single quotes. Let's take a look at an interesting example here. I'm going to get rid of this text and I'm going to create a variable called my status. And I'm going to set my status to equal I'm building a robot. Now look at what has happened here. The 
opening single quote starts off the string and then I have the letter I and then this second single quote which is the middle part of the I'm is telling the Python interpreter that this is my string and to ignore the rest of this text. So if I were to try and print this value or use it in my Python program I would probably get an error. So let's run this and see what happens. And indeed, I do get an error because I have this orphaned single quote. So to fix this problem, I am going to have to change these two double quotes. So here I'm going to use a opening double quote and a closing double quote. And now when I run my program, it's all good in the hood. We can see here that this works because now I have told the Python interpreter that this is my string expression and it's going to treat this single quote not as a special character but as part of the larger character string. We can also do something called string concatenation. This is when we combine multiple strings into a larger string. So I'm going to clear this text and for example, I might create a variable called my string one, and I will call this robot, and my string two, I will set to mesh. And then I come along and I create a third variable called combined, and I set that to be equal to my string one plus my string two, and then I print the value of combined the screen. So let's run this and see what happens. So here we have robot, we have mesh, and it's combined these two strings, but if we look down here at the bottom, it has not placed a space between the two words. So I will need to add a, a character white space. I can do that in a couple of different ways. I can add a set of single or double quotation marks and just create that empty space. So now if I run this code, I am going to get robot mesh. Python also has the notion of using special uh, string characters and these are characters we can use for formatting text so as an alternative to creating a empty character what I could have done here is I could have used the new line character and special characters in Python use a backward slash in this case it's going to be backward slash n and this is basically going to take the first string and print it. Then it's going to create a new line and then it's going to print a, the second line. So let's take a look here. And it goes robot and mesh. If I didn't want this to be on two separate lines, I could have used special character T for tab. And if I run this now, we'll get mo robot space mesh. I'm sure that strings seem like the most boring and furthest thing away from VEX robots, but I assure you that as we begin to work with the sensors and writing some of that sensor output to both the V5 display and the V5 smart controller, that strings are going to become increasingly more important to us. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to take a look at some advanced string concepts. Uh, in the meantime, if you took away anything useful from this video, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to this channel for more updates on using Robot Mesh Studio with VEX Robots.